In this video, we'll go over the paper titled Which Strategies Matter uh, for Noisy Label Classification? Insight into Loss and Uncertainty. In short, this paper tries to investigate what characteristics make an example uh, from a dataset important for the training pipeline. To this end, they focus on loss values and the uncertainty of model predictions in determining the importance of an example for the training. They experiment with four types of label noise, mainly the symmetric label noise, which is randomly choosing another label and assigning it to an example that you want to noisify, asymmetric, meaning uh, knowing the transition probabilities and using them in noisifying the data set, mixed, which is a combination of symmetric and asymmetric noise, and nearest label, which is they use a pre-trained model and basically focus on their, its confusion matrix and then uh, assign the labels in this noisification process accordingly. One of their main contributions is focusing on these different types of noises and trying to see if there's a difference between the noisy cohort and the clean cohort in terms of loss and uncertainty. For example, they show that the symmetric noise is generally easier to identify using loss or uncertainty. But when it comes to asymmetric noise, it's not as straightforward as it is for the symmetric noise. And therefore, a combination of these two or a more advanced technique is needed. The other part is their methodology, which is assigning this weight and this gradient update. This weight, of course, is associated with the example importance. And in this work, the weight is defined like this. Q is a value for history length. For example, 15 for Q means the last 15 time steps. When you have an example X from the data set, you also have its assigned label Y, which could be a noisy label. And PTYX gives basically the confidence or the probability of the model after softmax for predicting uh, Y and associating Y with X. So this is basically the predicted probability for the given label. And then over the past Q time steps, you have had probabilities that the model has assigned for this example to this given label. And this is basically, this term is the variance of those probabilities. Therefore, this paper is closely related to papers such as data cartography or the l paper, the deep learning on data diet. Anyways, these uh, basically importance scores are then normalized via a z-score normalizations, and then these values are used in training. And then they show that it leads to good improvements on Cypher 10, Cypher 100, uh, the Clothing 1M dataset, which is an example of a real noisy uh, dataset, and the tiny ImageNet. Now let's go over the paper. They start by mentioning the importance of loss and uncertainty as important training dynamics in the previous literature as well, and discuss their first major contribution, which is they present analytical results on how loss and uncertainty values of samples change throughout the training process under different types of noise. And the other one, which is that they have designed a new robust training method that emphasizes clean and informative samples. In short, they try to focus on low loss but high uncertainty examples. And they show that their method outperforms some of the other previously uh, introduced methodologies. Also note that this paper was published on August of 2020. They mentioned that their approach is going to focus on samples according to their uncertainty during the training phase. They mentioned that in the previous literature was shown that these types of uncertain samples are informative and basically require more training than other samples that are more easily learned. For example, if this is a decision boundary between two classes, we can see that some examples are, you know, well-learned and easy examples. Some examples are clearly noisy, meaning that they are far from the decision boundaries. And some examples are uncertain, meaning that they lie close to the decision boundary and could or could not be noisy. This is closely related to a newer paper called Triplet Loss for Learning with Noisy Labels. And in, in that paper, they had classified examples into easy, noisy, uh, and hard, which hard basically would include uh, the noisy examples close to the decision boundary as well. They mentioned that some of the other works in the literature have also focused on loss and working with low loss or high loss examples. And this sort of justifies focusing on loss as another training dynamic uh, measurement as well. They propose their method, which is focused on clean and informative samples, which in short is trying to focus on low loss and high uncertainty examples. They do some analytics on uh, basically distribution of loss and uncertainty on Cypher 100 with 40% noise at epoch 50. So the top column is going to show the symmetric noise and the bottom one is asymmetric noise. For example, if you look at loss, you can see that the reason why approaches such as divide mix work really well is that uh, loss values can essentially 
easily distinguish between the clean and noisy examples in this case. But this relationship is less clear when it comes to asymmetric noise. Same goes for the uncertainty as well. For example, for example, you can see that for uncertainty, when you have a label that is not meant for an item, usually the model is going to predict something close to zero for it, so there's not going to be a high variance for that. So you can see that um, this density is like this. But again, when it comes to asymmetric case, it's quite different. Which warrants uh, a focus on different methodologies for dealing with asymmetric noise than uh, the symmetric one. This also is another graphical representation of the proportions of different types of basically low loss, low uncertainty, low loss, high uncertainty, high loss, low uncertainty, and high loss, high uncertainty examples. And you can see that most of the examples in the noisy cohort uh, lie in the high loss, low uncertainty. And the algorithm they propose is focused on a warm up stage and then using this W to normalize, or sorry, to weigh the examples during the gradient descent. And obviously you can see that this covers both the uh, assigned probability to the given label at this stage that you're at, alongside the variance uh, through time, showing how, how many times the model did, for example, alternate between assigning a high or low probability to the given label, and therefore measure how uncertain it is. They also use an approach based on selfie. Basically, they go over the samples with inconsistent prediction and high loss, or samples that have consistent prediction that is different from the label, and then they set their rates to zero, which is the same as basically filtering them out for the training process. The inconsistency is measured by this value here. I believe they wanted to mention, uh, I might be wrong, but at the, end of, at the first glance, it seems that they wanted to have log k here. So basically what they want to do is that if you have like, let's say three labels and you're looking at past, let's say uh, five time steps, for these three labels, you have predicted probabilities, and they basically would compute these ratios, or basically the average of these, they create a probability distribution, probability distribution over the label space, and then they measure its entropy, and then they normalize it by the maximum value of the entropy, which is in that case, log k, k being the number of labels, in this case, three, um, and then they measure that as a value, uh, indicating whether to, to what extent it, uh, the, the, the value is uncertain. And then they work based on a threshold between zero and one. Again, we have the data sets that they have used in this work, which is Cypher 10, Cypher 100, Tiny Image Net, and Clothing 1M. They go over the types of noises that they have used, the noise rates, and for the nearest label transfer. Figure 4 is another example of their experimental results, measured against active bias, co teaching, selfie, and basically their methodology, which is FOCI, showing that their methodology usually leads in better results. You can see that on the bottom in the x-axis, you have noise rate, which is increasing, and the accuracy on the violation set, which is on the left axis. Figure five also shows that their method was superior uh, when it uh, under different types of noise. It's important to know what kind of baselines they compared against. So the active bias, was this reference number four, which emphasizes uncertain samples with high prediction variance. Co-teaching used basically two networks and feed, feed basically those two networks were utilized in feeding each other with the low loss samples of the other one. Selfie was another work which selects low loss samples and relabels the samples with high uncertainty. And here is more details on different types of models and uh, basically the classification accuracies indicating that FOCI was more um, efficient than the other methodologies considered in this paper. In figure six, they also show that as the training prog progresses, uh, for example, Epoch 25 versus Epoch 75, the model seems to be focusing more, uh, basically changing its behavior toward including clean examples versus including examples from the noisy subset. You can see that this left one is for Cypher 10 and for Cypher 100 is on the right. And also they did some ablation studies using basically low loss examples, high uncertainty examples, and you know, a combination of the two and show that this combination of the two would lead to better results. On clothing one M2, which is an example of a data set with real, real world noisy labels, they also show that their methodology works better than the other ones. All in all, this paper focuses on the importance of measuring loss and uncertainty in determining the importance of each example in a training process.